Vicarious Surgical is a surgical robot startup. They're focused at first on hernia surgery, and hernias are interesting because there's there's a lot of them. There's a few million procedures just in the U.S., and there's these type of hernias called ventral hernias. There's about 500,000 of those, and those are a more complex surgery. And so Vicarious is focused on that, and they believe they can do these faster, easier, and with less chance of recurrence, which is a really big deal. Most of the hernias that are repaired today are repaired with something called a, a simple hernia repair, where you take a non-adhesive mesh and essentially screw it into the ceiling, what, what is the ceiling when the patient's on their back, of the abdominal cavity. Unsurprisingly, 20% of the time, that non-adhesive mesh doesn't adhere to the non-adhesive peritoneum. It results in a recurrence of that hernia and the patient ends up needing to go back for a more complex revision surgery. We'll be able to do this technique in a, a way that is much easier for the surgeon, much less invasive for the patient, only having one 15 millimeter incision. We're designing it to take certainly sub two hours and we're, we're really aiming for sub one hour procedure for these complex techniques, allowing surgeons to treat more patients, to generate more revenue and to really you know, impact more lives. I had met Adam Sachs a, a few years ago when we put him on our under 30 list. One of the reasons he became so appealing to me for under 30 was I was like, my God, this guy's in his 20s and he's building a robot and his backers include, you know, Bill Gates and Fionn Kosla and Eric Schmidt and Jerry Yang. And I'm like, okay, what is, what is the deal? Adam and his co-founder, Sammy Khalifa, they met at MIT as undergrads. So they're super young and they were the kind of kids at MIT who spent a lot of time in the lab making actuators, which are the pieces of the robot that make the, the arms and the pieces move. They were interested in this area from, from a pretty early stage. And so Vicarious has this very different way of doing the architecture where it has shrunken the robot down so that a bigger piece of it goes inside the body. It has nine actuators, and so it moves around in a much more dramatic way and is easier for the surgeon to operate. It's like you see this little piece kind of zipping around and then sewing up internally and then it's done. And it's almost got this, you know, science fiction quality. They're hoping to get the robot on the market in 2023. Uh, they've told their investors uh, that they forecast a billion dollars in annual revenue by 2027. Uh, that would be pretty exciting if that's the case. It's hard to know sometimes with medical devices because obviously they need to get FDA approval, they need to get on the market, they need to sell to hospitals. Uh, a lot of things can happen along the way where, you know, maybe it takes longer, maybe the technology needs certain tweaks, maybe other things happen. There's a lot of pain points with robotics today, and it, it depends on whether you're talking to the hospital administrator or, or to the surgeon. Just to list a few, price point is one, that's price point on both capital equipment, service and, and, and annual maintenance and support, and consumables. The workflow in the operating room is so very disrupted by existing systems. They take a long time to set up, they take a long time to use, and they slow down operations. And that, you know, in, in a system where hospitals and many surgeons are actually paid per case, slowing down an operation, it hits the bottom line and it can actually make hospitals no longer profitable. And e even a nonprofit needs to, to stay afloat to continue the mission of helping patients. So it really does matter in this industry. The visualization is often a big negative, the inability to look around, the inability to clean your camera, and the kinematics of the system. The amazing thing about a legacy surgical robot is that with a wrist on the end of a stick, essentially the kinematics of the robot, the motion profile of the robot, is defined based on where the surgeon puts the incisions in the patient's abdominal wall. So for every procedure, the surgeon needs to carefully think about carefully choose where to put those incisions in order to get a good motion inside the abdomen, avoid collisions inside the abdomen, get good triangulation, avoid collisions outside the abdomen. It takes so much training, uh, over a hundred cases to become proficient in today's surgical robots. There are so many more patients, so many more surgeons, so many more hospitals 
that can be impacted. That's why we focused on really reinventing the way the robotic actuators work so that we can drastically re-architect the system so that we can have it less invasive for the patient, more portable, lower cost structure. It always works the same way. It always goes in through one incision. There are also a lot of other competitors. Intuitive Surgical, which is the giant of this space with like $120 billion market cap, has dominated the space for 20 years with its Da Vinci robot. But now there's like a lot of different types of surgical robots that are that are in production and in research and coming out. And the field is, is sort of poised to, to change um, in very dramatic and interesting ways. Disrupting an entire industry is, of course, never easy, but this is an industry that's really been looking for disruption. I mean, there are hospitals across the entire country and the world uh, desperately looking for be better technology to help their surgeons and help their patients, and it really is what it's about for them. I feel like it's hard to know what to expect from them in five to 10 years. I mean, medical devices often have a lot of promise and then you see how they play out over time. This fact that they've teamed up with is founded by a Hong Kong investor named Donald Tang. It's a $1.1 billion deal where they'll have 115 million that they're raising to give them some additional cash to continue to do the research that they continue to need to do on the robot in order to, in their hopes, get it to market in 2023. They're incredibly financially sophisticated. They bring access and experience that's already proved beneficial to, to the Asian markets, which are, you know, what really in many ways is, is going likely to be the number two market for robotic surgery, especially uh, between, you know, mainland China, Japan, uh, Korea. So we're in incredibly excited about this partnership. The deal itself will allow us to fully fund our business all the way through commercialization. Our goal 10 years from now is to really be a, a significant player in the robotic surgery industry, that it really is to take it, take our system and our, our offering from where we have today, bring it through the FDA process, and then be able to start shipping and selling to hospitals because that, that's really where you have an impact.